Outlaw Country by Gotti Chapter 12 Broken Cowboy I felt an overpowering wave of elation as I stood up in the growing puddle of blood. I felt powerful, dignified, so very right. I had the overpowering urge to find another battle, to shed more blood, to become even... <sighs> That's not me. A visceral disgust made me vomit into a pile of blood. The putrid mixture mixed with the gore that surrounded me. The office was a disaster. Wood particles illuminated by a, a light shining from broken glass windows. The draft, not enough to ward off the smell of death and gunpowder. I felt so much stronger, so much healthier. But I felt the, the feelings came with it that weren't real. They were induced. I was rewarded for my selfish slaughter, fed numbers like I would feed a horse. I was being trained, whipped into an instrument of violence. That was what the system was. That was the whole damn thing. That was the fucking point. The robotic voice chose that moment to speak as if mocking me. Corrected fatal weakness. Granting unique skill. Erudite. Reconciled skill set. Core progress 32%. Physique change to silver core. I slammed my fist against the hardwood desk and smashed it into tinderwood. The thing was thick enough to stop bullets, but not thick enough to stop me. My senses were off the charts, yet I felt as if they had always been like this. I could hear their shuffle of feet against the sand outside as someone tried to sneak their way to a body. There were three stores and a wall between us. I could see the tears on a newly widowed woman from the windows. She was all the way by the gate, hundreds of feet away. I was even more of a monster now. My clothes felt even wetter somehow. I, I looked down and saw some sort of black ichor oozing from my pores. My vision went black as, I, as it dripped from my eyebrows into my eyes. It, it smelled like death, even more so than all the real death around me. I vomited again, physical disgust mixed with emotional. I fell to my knees into a disgusting muck, black, red, brown, and green, and I sobbed like a child took a shower in Charlie's penthouse. Apparently he lived in the damn city hall. The entire third floor was essentially his house. The body of the big mealy specialist was slumped against the wall by the door, and I heard the wails of pure anguish from outside as the citizens began to count the dead. With great effort, much scrubbing, the black eye core oozed off my body, and it was, it was, I was, I was below disgusted, and I disgusted with myself even more. My skin was clearer than it had ever been. The scars were largely faded, and my muscle definition was immaculate. I had a damn six-pack now, which was ridiculous. I look at the mirror, and I no longer had the face that looked permanently sunburnt. The skin was much clearer, bronzed even. The network of scars almost entirely disappearing. The only one thing noticeable was one scar running across my lip and into my left eye, and it was somehow, it looked less gruesome than it, than it looked more charming. It wasn't for my semi-permanent scowl I'd even be called handsome now, and I hated it. I knew it was another goddamn incentive. Look at him. If you follow my instructions and kill the scores of human beings, you can be just as strong and attractive. I fought back the nausea. Every person on this planet had the system. The whole planet was likely created for the express purpose of nurturing people like me. Waves of monsters. Forced conflict. I worked up the courage to check my status screen. And my status screen read as such. Wanted dead or alive, Buck Jones. Five 
hundred thousand chips. Silver core. Occupation, vagabond. Stats. Body, 10.9 with a 2.0 modifier. Speed, 16.3 with a 4.0 modifier. Mind, 8.2 with a 2.0 modifier. Skills. Rampage, level 5. Infused Shot, level 3. Traits. Bandito 1. Deadeye, Mark 2L. Unique Skills. Erudite. Outlaw. I could read it now. I understood every word and concept, even the ones that made no sense. Of course, the backtracked stats were bonuses from other skills or traits. Isn't that just fucking obvious? It was for me. I instinctually knew what the stats did as well. Body governed the body's durability and force. Speed governed how fast my body and mind could move. Mind governed my senses, my ability to think, and how much I could use active skills. I focused on the names and displayed further details. It was about time I looked at this, I suppose. Rampage. One after another, more and more, every kill scales your stats, stacking at 0.5% per instance. 50% is the upper cap. Infuse shot, channel energy into a shot, and Enticing and enchanting the effect depending on the weapon type. Intention and energy channeled. Aerodite. Granted skill. Grants full language comprehension for all participating cultures. Deadeye. The energy to enhance your reflexes to the absolute limit so fast that your opponent could do appear to move in slow motion. Shots are... Corrected for accuracy within a threshold, making truly impressive feats of marksmanship possible. Bandito includes quick draw, take aim, penetrating shot, uh, fan the hammer, single action, riding, and dual wield. The beginner levels of a skill for a true outlaw encompasses a lifetime worth of protracted violence. Enchants all merged skill sets. Merges with Deadeye for extended effect. Low-level auto-effect scales off the tiles. Can name one weapon, named weapons, scale with the trait. Can evolve. Outlaw. You are perpetually on the run. Living the only life an outlaw knows how. Grants a unique mechanic a permanent bounty. Scale shots... Applicable skills and traits for the size of your bounty limit, which is 100,000. Bounty hunters will see through any disguise and locate your position from scaling distance of 5 feet. What I expected, more or less, everything was a reflection of who I was and what the system wanted me to be. Kill more, become stronger. If I don't, well, the bounty hunters will. And they would be happy to kill me. Just like before. I'm pushed to violence by violence. It's an endless cycle. I suppose the system changes nothing, just brings it to a forefront, rewards it, thrives on it. I splashed water on my face. Fine, then. Nothing has changed. I'll live that way. I always have, day by day, gun in hand. I will find strength not to appease the system, but for myself. It's the only thing I have left. I found some clothes that fit me. Apparently the old man was quite gallant in his time. But they fit me despite my enhanced physique. They were stylish as hell, and I looted several different outfits and chose one at random. I had plenty of hats at my disposal, but I kept mine. Charia method of stitching was one of a kind, after all, and I put it on, and it went well with what I had with the white and blue waistcoat and darker Puritan blue shirt. I came out of the bathroom, still ignoring the crying and yelling outside. I found and cleaned all of my dropped gear, still had plenty of ammo on my personages, and on Jeff, which was what I doubted was going to come back. Oh, speaking of gear, apparently I could name a weapon, and it would change. It was an obvious candidate for that. I drew my father's walker and 
Named weapon identified, Lincoln Walker with Bandito. In, it, it glowed brightly in my hand. And then it abated what I saw. I saw nothing. It looked the same as before, but I knew it was different. Stats sheet. Buck Jones's walker. Bronze tier evolving weapon. A moment toe from his father, from an age long past. It was quite the revolver for its time. Now it's been given new life. The weapon is now fundamentally linked to infused shot. It no longer fires ammunition, instead just fires pure energy, filtered and focused to an extreme point. I could feel just that I could blow a hole through a foot of pure steel with the damn thing. How's that, Dad? Enough numbers, I knew that I what I needed to know, and I knew what I needed to do, and it was time to face the music. I used the elevator since I could figure out what it actually was now and came to the bottom floor. Stepped around the many pools of drying blood, trying not to ruin my new boots before I had even left the building. I emerged at the front entrance. There were quite a few people out and about now. Some were crying over the corpse of a father, a mother, or a son. Others were dragging bodies out of sight, and more than a few were just staring at nothing. I heard a horse approach. I hoped it was Jeff, and I was quickly proven right. He casually trotted towards me, prancing around the corpses and the bloodstains, and offered his side to me. Been busy, he asked, tone jovial. I'd admonished him, but I could, I could use a little gallows humor. Yep, there were quite a few human-shaped speed bumps between me and Mr. Woodstock. Jeff laughed, his old horsey laughed and I climbed on his back. Nice duds, he remarked. Thanks, they're Charlie's. Sounds like a man of taste. I shrugged. Only thing he's tasting now is blood and gravel. Jeff looked around. I think it's more sand and less gravel, actually. Onlookers gazed at the talking horse, and the only armed man in town still standing. But the two were together. And I expected some thrown rocks and foolish attempts at childish screaming of why and how could you and what not, but instead they just ran. They all scurried like rats in every which way, screaming their heads off. Well, Jeff, I always thought you were a rather good-looking feller, but I joked, pretending that I found it funny. Oh, thanks, buddy. But I don't think it's me. You've got a presence about you now. It makes people run in fear, more or less, he said, shrugged audibly in his voice despite the fact that he couldn't physically shrug. What about you? Well, I can feel it. It's not bad, probably because you, you didn't kill scores of horses in front of me. I suppose the effect of the aura was showing itself, but not like people running in fear at me might, might see anything new. Would you feel bad if I killed scores of horses in front of you? Meh, not really, he said. Where are we going? I took one last look at the destruction around me and thought for a moment. Well, there's only one real answer for that, for a man like me. West. And so we left it all behind.